Okay, it says we are live. Okay. Sorry for getting a little bit of a late start here. <laughs> I said I was going to be on here at 8.30 and uh, things kind of got messed up a little bit. I'm going to uh, grab the link here and tweet it out. Well, now over here, might as well pop out the chat. So today, we're pretty much going to be playing with the wiring. Uh, <laughs> and I honestly don't know if the board's pre-flashed with the firmware on it. I'm hoping it is. If it's not, then that's going to be a whole new learning experience on this one. Because from what I read, it's pretty, pretty detailed. Almost got tweeted out. See, Turkins in the house. How you doing? Thank you for joining. Nope, you didn't miss the post. <laughs> I'm trying to get one up right now. <laughs> oh, man. Wait till you see this tweet. <laughs> Question is, am I going to release the magic smoke? <laughs> okay, let's... No, wrong button. You need to turn off. There we go. No, wrong button again. Ah, there we go. There, get everything all stretched out where it belongs so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Let's see. The XYZ Files, thank you for joining. Turkums, uh, just finished the, my first model of the year. Sweet. The TOG2 tank. That's cool. I got to check that one out. Just got to do a live stream of a test print and upload the files. That's cool. I'll, I'll be looking forward to that. So since I'm playing with the wiring today, I had to wear my Jay's Two shirts. Uh, <laughs> Jay's Two cent shirt. I just barely got up, man. <laughs> I'm seeing there's a lot of haze in that camera. Hang on for a second. Let me see if I can get that fixed. Something's not right. See if I can block something out here. I think it's the light from, from the yeah, something's going on here with the light. Sing off for just a second. Let me change the position of the camera just a hair. Let's see if that made it any better. Nope. I might be stuck with that. I didn't notice that yesterday. It's got a lot of haze that looked into it. Um, the light's just hitting the top of the the lens just a hair. I can probably back it out just a hair. Eh, I think I'll just leave it like that. It'll be fine. Anyway, let's see. Just call me TK. Okay, TK. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and get started here. Kind of toss everything over. 
So yesterday we got everything pretty much assembled on this. Uh, I came back out afterward and I just kind of cleaned a couple things up. Uh, I readjusted the centric nuts on the carriage and the other parts to make sure everything was touching correctly. Um, I took the end stop for the print bed and I moved it forward so that touches right where the nozzle comes to the edge of the bed, it touches the end stop. So that should stop it from, from messing anything up. Well, I'm hearing a noise I did not notice yesterday. What is it? I didn't readjust those nuts at all, so I don't know why that's... Oh, you know what it is? It's probably the... It was the nozzle. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't adjust the nozzle height all the way yet, but uh, that's what that noise was, was it rubbing against the PI sheet. Okay, so anyway, uh, just went through and kind of readjusted stuff like that. Uh, so now we're pretty much down to the electronics. So what I did do is I brought over some extra wiring, uh, visited my next door neighbor. He actually gave me a roll of, of this... Uh, well, it's like four wires in one. The only thing is it feels like it's it's solid uh, wiring, which you don't want to use that whenever you're having moving parts. So I do have this uh, wire here that is it's, uh, stranded copper wire. So it's it'll move a little bit easier without breaking. So I brought that because I want to go ahead when I set up the wiring as I want to have extra wire going over here so whenever I set up a cooling fan on it, I'll have the wiring already in place. So, where do we want to get started at? <coughs> oh, man. I think I'm catching whatever uh, Calvin's, Calvin's got. I'm hearing that uh, we're probably not going to be streaming tonight because he's under the weather. First things first, let's go ahead and kind of get rid of some of this extra junk here. And... Clean this up in here. I should have done all this before, but like I said, just barely got up. <laughs> okay. Let's move some of this over here. Seems like I got lots of bolts left over, so unless I just haven't got all the way through the well, I still have the LCD to put together too. Which, by the way, on the instructions, I did not find anything on the LCD on, on how to set that up. So, the part we're to now is setting up the circuit board. And if anybody in the chat happens to know or has ever had any dealings with the TiVo, if you could let me know, do, does the board come pre-flashed or do I need to download the, the firmware and flash it myself? I'm really curious about that. There is the circuit board. It's a pretty looking thing, isn't it? <laughs> Lots of colors. <laughs> okay, so let me just go ahead and move some parts here. Set it down on this mat. It'll be fine. And try to see what is the smallest screws I have that will work with that. Grab is this right one? Nope. There we go. They're gonna bottom out. Let's see. Try to figure out what's the smallest screws I have that will work with this board in order to mount it. Is it shows the board goes on. You know what? It actually shows there to be longer screws coming all the way through those. And it goes on with nuts. And that would have been interesting for me to find out yesterday. <laughs> Design optimization. <laughs> I 
I do have to say I am impressed with the build quality thus far with this. I had heard some horror stories about it, but I'm not seeing that with this particular unit. I do wish that it had two of the Z height motors on it, but I won't know until I start printing with it to see exactly how it prints. It, it'll probably print it just fine, I'm guessing. I'm going to take my phone off here. That's what I forgot to do. I forgot to silence my phone. go set that over there in case somebody important gets hold of me <laughs> and excuse me for just one moment I grab something Okay, so now I should be able to use the longer screws. Is it this one or one like it? Yeah, that's apparently what they're wanting. Because the other ones, let's see. Yeah, that won't work. So these, this link right here, and it should fit all the way through. Do it with the Allen wrench here. It's a TiVo tarantula because uh, it was the 3D printing professor gave it to me. And he said he'd give it to me as long as I promised to build it. And so I'm building it. <laughs> now, this did not come from GearBest. This, this came from a 3D printing professor. When I was on vacation in Colorado back uh, into September, early October, um, I went past and visited them, visited them over in Utah, and uh, in fact, I did a uh, a uh, interview with him. And at the end of it, he says, "Oh, by the way, I got something for you." <laughs> I was not expecting that at all. <laughs> if you ever get a chance to meet Joe, he is a very nice guy. One of the nicest guys you'll meet. Now I do have a GearBest printer that did arrive and it's the Zone Starts, the one sitting over here in this box. And uh, later, uh, it won't, probably won't be for another couple weeks, but I will be doing a, probably a live build on that one as well. I kind of enjoy doing the live builds because it kind of breaks up the monotony of being here by yourself for six, eight hours or whatever. <laughs> when I first started seeing different different guys doing the live uh, streams on their builds, I thought, how in the world can they do that? Until I did the smalls. When I built the smalls, I did it live. And then I totally understood it. <laughs> So if you're just joining in, I am correcting a mistake from yesterday. I'm uh, putting the longer bolts through that uh, for the standoffs because it has to go all the way through the standoff 
and then the nuts hold the circuit board on. So I have to put the longer screws through it. Which really explains a whole lot because I was wondering how in the world I was going to take and find screws short enough to, <laughs> to work with that. <laughs> go done okay so now I can take the circuit board okay let me loosen up this one see if I can get it to just jog over just a hair yep there we go And probably this bottom one too. Yep. It is in place. <clears throat> and now how in the world am I going to get those little nuts on there? <laughs> there we go. There. Good enough. <clears throat> Oh, uh, TK is getting a uh, Moai in the next couple weeks. Sweet. That is a cool printer. Uh, piece of advice. Don't keep it anywhere where it gets cold because it will cause the resin to thicken up and uh, you'll have uh, print failures. So if you keep it inside to where it's, uh, I don't know the Celsius, uh, what would it be in Celsius, but 70 degrees here in the States, if 70 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm not sure what that works out to be in Celsius, but uh, if you take it and, and keep it, you know, fairly not hot, but in a warm where you're comfortable inside your house, you should be fine. The only thing is you got to keep it also kind of ventilated because it does have a smell to it. <laughs> gotten one how i3 plus stop ripping my hair out during the wait <laughs> that's cool <laughs> i have yet to even see one of those in person that's another printer i've heard good things i've heard bad things There we go. Circuit board is in place. Let me turn around here so you can see it. Ah. <laughs> okay. So now that the board's in place, that's pretty much where the instructions leave off. It's between that and then putting the... It talks about putting the fan on this part of it. After that, Instructions pretty much just go to talking about, you know, it has a, a schematic for the wiring. So you pretty much have to choose your own way of how you route the wires. And then uh, I'm not even sure. I, I have not even looked at a picture of a fully built TiVo yet to, to see where the LCD screen is supposed to go. So I got to pull up a picture here in a bit and find out.
XYZ files been looking for the one how D7 or the any cubic photon photon for my resin printing debut. That's cool. I didn't know about the any cubic one. I'd heard about the one how because uh, Calvin was talking about the one how until he knew somebody that got one <clears throat> and he said the detail on it, it wasn't maybe meeting what he was needing for his train project, which honestly, some of the parts that he gets printed on that train project are just insanely detailed to where it's, it's very hard for any, uh, kind of a hobby printer would be able to do it. You pretty much have to go with one of the, the larger companies that that's what their, their printers are meant to do or the very fine detail stuff. You, with a MOA, you probably could do some time lapses with it, but you'd probably have to do it in a fairly dark room. You have to make sure that your lighting is not, uh, it's not, uh, what do you call it? Um, <laughs> I'm drawing a blank. Whatever wavelength the lighting is for curing the resin. Uh, UV, you have to make sure there's no UV to it. Uh, otherwise, you could harden up the vat. Yeah, his train project's really cool. See, I think I missed a couple comments here. Uh, forgive me if I get your name wrong. E Ewan, uh, it's a really good printer with some modifications are welcome. Micro Swiss hot end. Some people put Z brackets on. All you really do need, need to do is tighten all the screws. Some of mine were loose. That's cool. I believe I was talking about the one how. That's cool. And then uh, Gregory got a MK3, and it'll be shipped the end of March. Sweet. I would love to have one of those printers. <laughs> Let's see. Here we go. Is it the right length? I think so. Wrong. There we go. That feels right. I can't put the lid on the circuit board yet. I need to do all the wiring. So... As soon as I get this fan on here, we'll start getting into it. I'm just trying to delay the inevitable. <laughs> you know, and I brought the bought the MK3 and multi material. Don't tell my mother. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> That's right. She'll never watch this. <laughs> oh man. 
So that's where the money for the for the scholarship went, huh? <laughs> I got friends that work with me up at Sears. <laughs> you know, they're always talking about, oh yeah, I took and I, I bought a car with, with what I had left over for, for the year. <laughs> I'm like, oh God. <laughs> That's going to be one expensive car when you get that loan paid off. <laughs> okay, so we have our cover with a fan for the this portion over here, but now we got to get into the wiring. Also, I want to do the LED or the LCD. Does anybody know where the LCD goes? Does it mount? I'm not sure where that would go. I know it wouldn't mount sideways. I bet you there's probably a mount that I got to print or something in order to put it up there. Because I can't see putting it on the front of the machine. I don't know. Maybe it goes there. That's a possibility. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take it apart and find, take the stuff off. In case you weren't here yesterday, uh, one of the viewers mentioned rubbing the back of a knife across the edge of the acrylic. And that it will uh, allow the paper to come off easier. And that's the reason why I keep dragging an Allen wrench across it. Is it actually does seem to help. Makes it where the kind of raises the edge of the of that paper. Makes it a little bit easier to to get hold of. Not tremendously, but a little bit. While I'm peeling that, I go over here to this laptop. And see if I can bring up a picture to see exactly what it is supposed to be. It's an AMD, so it takes a little bit of time to load up. <laughs> That's an older laptop, so it, I got to go through and kind of clean it out a little bit. Up until I got this computer, that was the computer I used for slicing the models to put on the 3D printers. So a lot of my files were on that computer. Now that I've got this computer set up, I do all my slicing out here with it. It does a whole lot faster. There we go. We got that. Now I can do a search for TiVo Tarantula. Might as well go to TiVo USA, but why not? They should have a picture on there. <clears throat> well, there's a little monster. Okay, so it's the Black Widow. It just so shows it sitting on a desk. It doesn't even show it on the printer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Even says he's got the rest of the student loan though. That's good. As long as, long as you don't dip into that. That way you use it for what you, what's intended. Man, it's, it's expensive for college though. I a lot of my friends go there, and man. In fact, if one of my friends he works for a sign shop, he didn't study anything in college to do the work he's doing. But when he got out of college, he, he had so much debt to pay, he had to get a job. And so that's what he ended up doing is he's, he paints and, and designs uh, the signs for, for businesses. But he works for a sign shop where he does all that kind of stuff. I never did ask him what he, uh, what he actually studied in, in college. 
another friend of mine, he worked up there at Sears with me for a long time. He went to college like three different times over the years. He had studied journalism, then he got into dance, and he got into a bunch of other stuff. Next thing I know, he leaves Sears. He goes up to San Francisco, and he starts doing uh, Bollywood dancing. <laughs> and so he actually uh, got a job as a fitness instructor teaching Bollywood fitness. <laughs> and from what I understand, he's doing really good at it, too. <laughs> So I guess he got something, some part of the college that worked out for him. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Let's bring the LCD over here. There's no plastic over the screen, so I can't even do an Angus and start to peel it and then put it back. <laughs> Okay, and uh, here's the funny part. It does not show in the instructions anything about the LCD. It goes straight from putting the circuit board on there to a wiring diagram. Eh, I can't really see it to how to set up the software and sli to slice your model. So it doesn't say anything about the this part of it. So I guess I'll be winging it on this part. Let's see. So I'm sure there's going to be standoffs. And it looks to me like it would be the short ones. Yeah. And let me look at this back piece. Yeah, none of the screws except for the outside one. So it'll be the longer standoffs on the corners. And then I'm guessing I could probably just mount it to this frame up here. So let me go ahead and get these longer screws. Set up the that part. Make sure I got everything. No, that's in the wrong hole. There we go. Do I have that the right way? Yeah. Okay. So Turkin says that his system takes 10 minutes to log into Windows 10. <laughs> I'm very fortunate with this, this uh, PC I got down here for the editing and everything. That one actually loads up in about, I think, uh, less than a minute, and I'm I'm up and running with it. But I also make sure I don't put any extra stuff on it. I I pretty much just have my editing software and Cura and uh, just a couple slicers on it. I don't I don't put a lot of other programs on it because I want I want to keep it where it loads fairly quick. It was a student loan will be 40. Forgive me if I don't have my, I don't know the different symbols all the way. I believe that's Euro. 40,000 Euro. Electrical and electronics engineering. Oh, that's cool. That's the neat thing about that is you, you get into a trade like that and you'll be set. You, you can't go wrong with, with learning something like that. Hello, 3D Kid. Thank you for joining. Okay. Got those two in. I got to loosen these two up. 
these do have slots in the, pl the plastic, so it allows for some adjustments. There we go. <clears throat> I think that will work. Okay, so now throw on some nuts here. Somebody was asking me yesterday what size card reader this has. Actually, it has a full-size SD card reader on it. That's cool. That's one thing I'm going to experiment with later on with that. Uh, printer about smalls. I found an adapter online where you can actually, you're supposed to be able to hook an LCD up to the, oh, you just did an update or a backup. Um, there's actually a uh, some kind of a uh, adapter that's supposed to be able to hook onto the board to uh, make it where I can use a LCD screen with it. And then I think it uses the built-in card reader that's already on the already on the smalls because it does have a uh, micro SD card reader. So I've been wanting to play with that. Okay. So that's that portion of it. So the next thing will be putting the standoffs on this. Oh, by the way, Yesterday, I ended it by dropping the nut for the end stop on the side here. I actually, after I ended the stream, I got down on the floor really good and looked, and I found it underneath the zip end of a zip tie. <laughs> That's how small those things are. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Anyway, I finally found that, so I didn't have to buy a new one. I was able to to use it. There we go. Music by CKB. How you doing? Thank you for joining. Now that standoff. I hate these screws. They're just a tad long. But that's all right, though. I think they can force it in. Yep. There we go. Nothing like that noise. <laughs> Hey, King Random, thank you for joining. Yeah, Windows 10's got a lot of, a lot of spyware on it. But if I had to choose between it and Windows 7, I'd take Windows 10 any day. <laughs> there we go. 
I don't think that's going to interfere with anything if I go up that far. Let's just double check. Yeah, it might. I'll probably have to make a bracket and set it up here on top. Actually, I did. I went through uh, <laughs> before uh, Barnacles ever came up with that video. I had heard that you could go through and do all that. And I actually went through and did that. So I got a lot of it turned off. Trying to see just how bad life is going to be if I mount this LCD screen here. The only thing I see that's going to be a problem is the Bowden tube. That's going to be the issue. Is the plate's going to be... Eh, fall. So here's... I'm going to have Bowden tube going from here to here. I guess I could mount that all the way over here to this end of it. If I did that... Yeah, it would still, if it's something really big, it would still mess up. So I'll have to print a bracket and, and mount it on top. So for now, I'll just leave it off. I'll just uh, put the ribbon cables on it and then just put, put it to the side. There we go. Oh, uh, let's see here. Why do you say that, Jimmy? Never had an issue with it. Are you talking about Windows 10? Yeah, I don't have a pro problem with Windows 10. Or you're talking about Windows 7. And when, Windows 7 is when they started doing the, where they didn't really have the re-click down the corner. And I was always used to clicking in the corner and it had more of an app set up to it. And I just, I just never liked it. Windows 8 had that, but at least it had where you could bypass it. Okay, so we have EXP2 and EXP1. Get those mounted into place. Is that right? There we go. Okay, so now I can If I finish that out, though, then I can't mount any. I think, oh, well, yeah, for, for now, I'll just go ahead and finish it, putting the screws in this, mainly so I can not have anything uh, electronic touch anything whenever I've got the thing running. Okay, I'm definitely hoping to have this thing running today. <clears throat> This cost me nothing. <laughs> A friend of mine uh, gave this to me. Let's see, wrong and wrench. There we go. <clears throat> I'm not going to tweak down on these just yet because I'll be taking it back apart later on. There we go. Got her box all set up. Okay, so now we get down to the good stuff. <laughs> I think this is where I'm going to bring the chair over because <laughs> it's going to be tedious. Oh, and a couple of things I did get. Right, get this out of the way. Getting ready to fix my D200. I went and I picked up some of this... Uh, 
it's like a flexible wire loom so that uh, you can put the wires to it. I think I'm going to use that on this. Yeah, you can't see nothing on the camera, can it? Yeah, that's what I'm going to block the chat. I'm just going to stand up, do it. Hang it. <clears throat> I was going to sit down and do it, but that's that's not going to work out. Let's just go ahead and get up here. I can still watch the chat and everything. I got everything set up for standing up from yesterday, so why change it? <laughs> I thought about just doing the wiring on this and then doing everything after the fact, you know, as far as fixing it up. And I decided, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and do everything in one shot. That way, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. See, cut some of this wire off because it's been tangled around everything for a while. Same with this one. <laughs> Stuff don't fit. Bring out the welder. Yep. <laughs> he remembers how I used to be. <laughs> Just think of, uh, uh, you can, uh, to imagine how I used to be, just imagine Calvin except with less hair. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and now the fan has to have constant power. So I'm going to end up wiring this directly to the power supply. The rest of this will go to the circuit board. And the same way with the other fan, the fan for the for the case portion of it, that's got to be hooked to a constant on. Um, because from what I understand, the fan header that's on the circuit board is software controlled. So that's supposed to be a huge no-no that they don't you're not supposed to use it. Okay, what did I do with my scissors? I can just use these. There we go. The end of it was kind of burnt off, so I want to do that right. And then I want to take this end stop and I want to bring it through the same set as this. So let's take. I'm just going to kind of, that's it, fall. I'm going to take it about there. Add some extra to it just in case. I can always cut it off. There we go. Okay, Let's see if we can get this to fit through this loom. That somehow got messed up. There we go. Okay, I just don't want to, you have to use that plastic stuff that they sent with it, <laughs> if I can get out of it. <laughs> okay. The rest of these are pretty much just wire ends. It's the it's the ones with uh, let's see I got that that there it's the ones with the actual ends that are crimped on or whatever that's a pain to get through this kind of stuff all the rest of it will just travel right through it.
Even is asking if I've tried velocity printing. It looks amazing in translucent filament, especially PETG. I have never heard of it, actually. I'll have to check that out. I'm starting running and starting to run into a problem here, and it has to do with the individual wires. I should have probably taped them together on it. I don't want to do this, but I got to. What had happened? I didn't uh, consider the fact that the some of the wires have uh, they were tinned, and so they were sticking out and poking into the sleeve. So let me, I should have brought some electrical. Yeah, I do have some electrical tape. I don't want to do everything with duct tape. <laughs> Actually, I will put a piece over that because that was jabbing into the sleeve. And I'll put some around this other part. There. That will make it easier. That didn't. That I had those wires caught on there, but I guess not. There. They are now. The <laughs> <clears throat> end of this got frayed. That's all right. I can trim that. Go. So far, so good. Not having any jams this time. One thing I did forget is to put my other wires to it. Oh, my God. You know what? I'll deal with that another time. Because it's going to be a bit before I can get, before I can put a cooler on there anyway. There we go. Let 
Actually, let me just see if I can do something with that. Be nice if I could get that through there now. I haven't messed with this stuff in a while. I should I should do it a lot more often, but I got so used to using that uh, plastic, well, the stuff like what they send with it. Let's see. This stuff. And yeah, in some ways it's easier to put on, but it just doesn't look as nice. Caught somewhere back here. Let's see where I'm caught at. Ah, made it. Got it through it. <clears throat> okay. So now I can start adjusting my cable length on different wires by first off taking this tape off. <clears throat> there. So the end stop I wanted to take and shorten that wire. So what I'll do is I will pull it until it's where I want it. Next one's going to be the fan wire, which is going to be that's going to be for the thermistor. That's my primary wires. There we go. That's the fan wire. Pull it. All the rest of it looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take and trim back some of this frayed portion. There we go. And I will use electrical tape. Bring it up here fairly close to where I want it. I don't want it too close to the hot end. But at the same time, I don't want this loom to come loose. There we go. <clears throat> and now I can pull the loom tight along the wiring and that really makes it look a lot nicer I think There it is.
And now I can clip off these other wires. Done. <clears throat> so what I'm going to end up doing is bringing this up here. And I need to find a tie-off point on here so that I know it's not going to get yanked on or anything like that. So I think what I'm going to do actually is bring it right over the top here. Just kind of bend these wires a little bit. Make sure it's not going to interfere, which it's not. And I'm going to take one of these zip ties. There's two little holes up here. I'm going to take this outer hole, see if the zip tie will fit through, which it does. Let's bring it up here to the top. See, where's my little nose? There we go. Okay, bring it back here to where I want it, and tie her down. <clears throat> Looking good. There we go. So that takes care of that. I can take these wires and just kind of do something with them for now, but at least they're in place for whenever I do a cooling fan on it. I don't have to worry about running those in the future. Okay, so the next thing, I want to make sure that I've got those over there. Wire length isn't that bad on these. So now i got to find the wiring schematic and what to do, do with my owner's manual. <laughs> <laughs> so pull this up here. I picked this up on eBay. It was like 12 bucks for a hundred feet of it. So definitely a lot cheaper than going to, to town to get it. There's my book. Okay, so it shows the circuit board flipped over from what I've seen in the past. I'm just going to do this upside down. <laughs> Is that right? Let's see. There. And stops. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So, this white wire is the end stop for up there, which that's what uh, it goes X, Y, Z. So, that'd be the X end stop. X end stop goes next to the last, which is this one right here. Okay. The fan wires for my extra fan, I'm going to leave those loose for now. I'm not going to take and hook those in. But this is for the cooling fan. That's got to be wired into the power supply, so I'm going to not mess with those just yet. Let's see. <laughs> I wish I could tell for you some wire wrap. <laughs> Think your corner caught fire yet? Not yet. <laughs> We're getting there. Not kidding. <laughs> oh, goodness. Tivo's watching this. They'll never, ever, ever send me a printer. <laughs> Oh, God. <clears throat> I 
invest in some cup computer sleeving material. Yeah, I thought about that. That tele uh, that uh, paracord type stuff. I really thought about that. That's the reason why I went and went with this wire loom because it's it'll do the trick. I just got to figure out how I want to fix it on here. And actually, I just think I've just found a mount point right, right there. Bracket where the extruder motor is. That might be the perfect spot. We'll find out here in a little bit, though. Okay, so this right here is for the thermistor. And... Stop, heat bed. That's for that. Looks like it's going to go to the top one over here. There we go. Okay, so the next thing is going to be for the hot end. And that's going to go into this one. And I think they, it came with a screwdriver. Where did I see the screwdriver? <clears throat> there it is. That's going to be on here. And it doesn't matter on it, from what I understand, if it's uh, as far as polarity goes, it doesn't matter on it. I think I want to cut those off a little bit. <clears throat> These are my favorite right here. <laughs> okay. I'm going to clip them all. It's just a hair long, but not as long as what they are now. Insulation on those things are just crazy. Oh, wow. That doesn't even want to strip them. Okay. Yeah. Actually, it did strip it a little bit. It's like a silicone slash, uh, fiberglass type insulation on these. It's crazy. There we go. The same thing for the other one. <laughs> that thing usually takes it right off. That fiberglass part of it is heavy duty. There we go. Okay, so let me get down here so I can see what I'm doing. Didn't grab. How come that one didn't grab? Maybe this didn't have opened up enough. There we 
go. There, that grabbed. <clears throat> Am I putting ferrules on the conductors before putting them into the screw terminals? No, I'm not. I'm uh, just putting them up in there and then tightening them down really tight. I'll have to look into getting some for it. Okay, so... We've got that. So that pretty much takes care of everything that way until I get to this fan here. So then the next thing, I think I start running wires from everything else here. So that's going to be for the that part of it. It's going to be for stepper motors. What is this? Oh, that's going to be for the heated bed. That all straightened out. It's actually a pretty long wire set for the heated bed. So is it going to go that way or that way? And it's going to go like that. Oh, that's got a clip on there. That's cool. But I was wondering, let me see how long the end stop is. Yeah, it's not going to be that long. Okay, rats. Well, I'll run it with another set of wires. I think what I'm going to do with this, go ahead and do the same thing with the wire loom. Dress these up a little bit. See, we have NLTMW in the house. Thank you very much for joining. By the way, thank you very much, Randall, for joining. I appreciate it. Okay, here we go. I'm going to do the same thing on this I did on the other one. I'm going to run some tape around the end of it, make it a little bit easier to feed it. There we go. Yeah, it's going pretty good. I uh, working on the electronics now, just trying to get it so we can power the thing on. Uh, once again, if any of you have any experience with the TiVo Tarantula, please let me know. Do I need to download firmware, or does it come preloaded on the on the board? Because that's one thing I've not found out yet from anybody. <clears throat>
Almost to the end. There we go. <clears throat> Actually, let's go ahead and pull that down just a hair. I have to trim off a little bit more, I think. There we go. There we go. <sighs> Definitely looks better. <laughs> Just need to cut off some extra here. Okay. Now if we just take the tape off that I put on. <laughs> yeah, somebody was calling. <laughs> oh, that could wait though. Okay, so these actually do have barrels onto these. It didn't on the hot end. I don't know if you can see that. Those are doubled up, and they actually have fells already crimped onto them. That's cool. So let's just go ahead. We need to cut off a little bit more of that wire loom. Let me just go ahead and free out a little bit more of it. There we go. Yep, I like that. Let's see, now where does that... That's probably going to come back to bite me if I do that. Let me go ahead and just trim back. There we go. It's going to end up coming back to bite me if I tape that like that. I guarantee it. It's just too close to the end of it. Let's see where I'm at here. Okay, so I'm going to put those down there. Eat a bed goes all the way to 
that larger block and then this is going to go all the way up there okay so if that goes there That's going to go down there. So, yeah, definitely got to take off some more. There we go. Pull that back off. Trim it again. Actually, I'm going to take it a little bit further. There we go. That will work. Wiring is going good. <laughs> there we go. What I'm doing is I'm just trying to dress up the wires, make it where they look a little bit nicer so that whenever I... I'll show you here. Put that on there. Then I can bring that around here. We can plug the thermistor for the heated bed into the circuit board. And now I can go down here and put these ends to the this block down here. Judging by the way they got the wires doubled up, I'm guessing that that must uh, carry a lot of current. <laughs> okay, so the positive will fit on the right. Now here's the problem though, the way they've got this set up, it's not fitting in there. Oh, there it goes. I just had to move it around a little bit more. There we go. So the positive is connected. Now for the negative. the negative in Negative is not, it's not biting down on the negative for some reason. How come? There. Okay. 
Now they are secured. Got it. Okay. So once again, I'll move these extra wires back out of the way. In fact, I'm just going to tape those back for the moment. Let's see. Do I still have my aluminum Prusa i3? Yes, I do. And that still works great, by the way. Thing really does the job. <clears throat> Oh, thank you, Randall. I'll definitely check those out. The most of the capacity of your power supply goes to the heated bed and then to the hot end. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured, but judging by how, how much, I mean, they doubled up the wiring going to the heated bed, which that's kind of a, I don't think I've ever seen anybody do that before. <laughs> that's where definitely I could see where the MOSFET would, would come in handy. Because if it's taking that much power, it's it to hook it in directly to the to the circuit board is kind of a little bit hairy. But we'll see. I'll definitely be keeping an eye on it. I won't be printing while I'm not home. That's for sure. <laughs> okay, so we have our heated bed connected. We've got now we're getting to the point where we're going to start doing end stops for the other portions of it, and then running the motor the wires for the stepper motors let's see got a couple short ones here and then got a couple long ones so let's see what goes where So I'm guessing the short one would go from here to the extruder. And then the other short one, I'm guessing, would go to this one up here. And the two longer ones, I'm guessing, would go to this one and this one. I'm guessing. X and Y. Okay, so let's do the X motor first. That's going to be the X, so it's going to be this one right here. Let's go ahead and go to the bottom. Yeah, the short one's not going to work, so let's definitely go with the longer one. And once again, I want to make it look nice. Okay. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of tape over the end here to make it smoother. <clears throat> Let's see here. Tinkering Corner, how many printers do I currently have? Currently, I have, well, one. I have my i3 down there, so that's two. I have the GTEC E180 there, that's three. The D200, which is four. The Me Creator 2, which is five. And the Zone Star, which I still need to build over there, which would be six. Very soon I plan on getting in connection with one of our local schools and hopefully do something with them and hopefully donate a couple of these to them and get things kind of going around here. <laughs> okay. This is what I was worried about on this loom, whether I got it large enough that would fit over these connectors. With the tape, it's doing all right. So that's a relief. <laughs> I 
Okay, so Maker Fun 3D, you want a MOSFET between the bed and the and the board. I agree. That's I'm going to be looking into getting one right away because that size wiring with the solder connections on that board, that's that's not going to work. <laughs> um, I really am curious how much power that board actually pulls, this, this heated bed. I'm really curious about that because that thing must pull an awful lot of power. I wonder how many of those you use on daily uh, use on the daily. Okay. The D200 is typically the main one I I was doing a lot most of my videos with. Um the wire going up to the stepper for the Z axis or for the X axis had uh got crimped. Uh I did a really large print and it took it right up to the limit of of what it's capable of doing and when i did it uh it ended up uh, crimping the wire the somehow there was a well there's a little plastic piece that holds the wiring in place and it uh limited the movement to the point where it, it the wires just went just crimped really hard and it broke the wires inside the inside the insulation so they are actually sending me a new uh, harness for that. I'm hoping it'll get here pretty soon. I did order another harness temporarily, or you know, order one on eBay. Only thing is, it came yesterday, and it doesn't have the like on most of these. You they always have it where it's it's keyed, so you know which way it goes. They're not keyed, so because of that, I could put them in place, but they're not going to hold really tight. So I'm going to end up, uh, I might do that just to, as a temporary measure, just to get it running again. But uh, I will definitely have to change it back out as soon as they get the, the factory one. There we go. Slipped on me. <laughs> Get it further up on the wire so it won't slip again. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So this for the X motor goes at the bottom. It's going to be here. I'll turn around the other way. Nope. Or do I have the wrong end? I got the wrong end. There we go. And we'll feed that underneath and down. And then come up. Come on, get in there. There. Okay. So we have the Z. Next one, we'll do the Y, which is going to be that one. It's going to be another long wire. go oh, there's a long one. <laughs> oh goodness yeah this has gotta be like watching paint dry <laughs> Do 
What time are we today? 10, a little after 10 o'clock. That's not bad. I was on this yesterday for four hours. So I figure if I could finish this up by noon today, I'm just hoping it's got the firmware already loaded on it. If it does, it'll be good. If it doesn't, then it, I'll probably end up having to do it in a video, getting the firmware and all that taken care of. That's going to put me a little bit past the time I got. X axis takes the short wire and the extruder takes the long wire. Um, no, <laughs> I, I think, yeah, the X axis will need the longer wire. Actually, it needs one that's in between, but the short wire, I think is going to be just a little bit too short for it. I really thought about trying it and I thought, nah, because <laughs> I think uh, for the extruder, I think the short wire will work perfectly for it. It is funny that they sent an extra wire, though. They sent two long wires and two, sent two short wires. Who are my top five YouTubers? <laughs> Here's one of them. <laughs> Jay's Two Cents. <laughs> Jay's Two Cents, Barnacle's Nerdgasm, uh, 3D Printing Nerd. That's three. Oh, man. I don't want to offend anybody, though. <laughs> They'll need two more. So many to choose from, though. <sighs> Crazy Russian Hacker. <laughs> I watch almost all of his videos when they come out. <laughs> and actually, King of Random was one of my favorites for a long time. He's, he's diversified lately to where he's having other people do a lot of his videos, and it's not quite the same. So I'm kind of having a harder time watching his videos, but uh, I really used to really enjoy his videos. Okay. Yeah, I saw the thing on, on, uh, I think it was a, a a YouTube post, and then he did, he did a, a YouTube video asking for people to apply for uh, making videos for him. And when somebody reaches out that far, their content usually starts suffering. So that's I feel kind of bad they get out to that point. I'd rather see less content from them and more him doing the videos but you know each their own that way <laughs> no it's a uh it is a bowden tube extruder which is only going to be the second time i've actually dealt with a bowden tube because normally like the d200 it's got a uh a uh, direct drive, but it uses a Bowden tube to feed from the back from the from the filament sensor, and then uh, all the rest of them have been direct drives except for the E one eighty. The E one eighty was the first Bowden tube setup where it has the extruder or the has the extruder motor separate from the the hot end. I think that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Is he desperate for content that he has to do that? No, he's not desperate for content. What it is, he's trying to do uh, seven videos a, day, uh, a week. He's trying to do one a day. And because of that, he's wanting to have, have it where it splits up the workflow, which 
that's fine. But at the same time, it like I said, it, it eventually your your content will suffer if you have other people doing it for you that way. I mean, he has to give up a certain a certain amount of control of his channel in order to do that. That's the only the only bad thing about it. So we're we're used to watching, you know, Jello mold videos and and. I, well, the one I really liked of his was back when he was doing the model rockets and he was doing the, the sugar rocket uh, motors. That was really cool. But he used to be more into to project type videos. And now it's turned more into what gets him the, the fastest likes and stuff like that. <laughs> Bowden is okay unless you're trying to print with flexible. That's what I hear too. I've heard of that a lot. I've heard that uh, if you try printing flexible, it's a nightmare. And I've also heard that they really, if you're going to use one of those, like a, a Creality Creal or whoever it was that has the, let's see. Put it around here, the back for now. I'll have to figure out which way I want to run that. Um, the one that has the multicolor extrusion setup. It's not the the Prusa, it's the it's another one. Oh, that's not going to work. Get that underneath into the back. There we go. Um, I've heard whenever you have a color changing or the palette, I believe it's called. When you have those kind of setups, it uh, it just will not a Bowden tube setup will not work with it. Let's see. Bowden can be a uh, yeah <laughs> if you don't design your extruder properly. I can imagine. I didn't even hit me till just now when I was running that through there. I was going to take and run the this uh, end stop wire through that same loom. I forgot all about it. That's all right. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some tape over the end here. Not doing too bad on time. Not bad at all. I'm doing to this printer what I wish I had done to my first one. I wish I had took the time on the wiring. That's one thing I regret that I didn't just take the time, do things right from, you know, from the very beginning. So I figured on this one, I would kind of dress it up, get it all fixed up. Because if there's any problems with the electronics, it's not going to be in the actual wires going to the items. It's going to be the motors, the fans, or the, the board itself. It's not going to be the actual wire, at least not at this point, I don't think. Famous last words. <laughs> the Prusa MMU is a multi Bowden. That's what I've heard. And I'll tell you what my issue with multi color printing when it comes to, to the way that it's being used uh, with the, like with the MMU, with the, the palette and the ones like that. To me, it's a really great idea. But the problem is if you've ever seen the purge block or whatever the, the company will call it that, that creates it, they have a tremendous amount of waste when it comes to, let's say you're wanting to print something multicolored like that. So 
however you print it, whatever, let's say you're printing it this direction on the build plate, there's actually a block that has to print off to the side. And if it's printing a single color, it will do like 5% infill. It's not using a whole lot. But when it changes color, it has to take and print until it purges the entire amount or the, the entire color out to where, let's say it's switching from blue to yellow until it gets to the yellow and then it goes back over and continues printing where the yellow is going to be. And then if it's blue on the same line, before it can print the blue, it's got to go back over and purge the yellow back out, back to the blue and then finish it out. <laughs> before you know it, you've got a purge block that weighs a quite a bit. And the first time I ever saw it was up at the Rockland Mini Fair, um, Mini Maker Fair, I was up there with uh, Travis. And he showed me the purge block that, that he had. I couldn't believe it. I mean, a thing, it, it honestly felt like it weighed as much as a half a roll of filament. I didn't ask how much filament was used to to print whatever. The, the, it was a, uh, I forget what the, what the item was he printed. It was like a little figure. I couldn't believe the amount of, of waste when it come to that. But it was a very detailed print. I mean, it really looked nice. But, man. <laughs> Tinker Corner. I've designed printers with Bowden extruders. And, man, even having the tube be slightly too long can give you the world of trouble. That's interesting. I honestly never give it any thought when I come to the Bowden tube. Not until I started messing with this. And it's like, man, because I tried doing a uh, color change mid-print, and that was an ordeal. <laughs> I I was so used to using a uh, using a direct drive that I was used to, you know, you can kind of change color on the fly and, and just uh, just taking and cut your filament and then kind of feed it in as it's going, especially when it's doing the infill, because who cares if there's a blob in the infill. And that was, when I was doing it with that, I cut it, and I'm like, wait a minute, I can't do it like this. <laughs> it just turned into a nightmare. Let's see, that one goes up there. Right way, wrong way. Wrong way. There. Okay. So extruder. I'm guessing this is going to be EO. Actually, you know what? Let's just go ahead and run it up here. There we go. Run that right down there to is that Z? Yep. There we go. I'll run that right out the top. Take it right in behind there. That looks pretty good like that. Cool. I kept thinking I had an extra wire wire, but I didn't. <laughs> I forgot about the extruder. There we go. Okay, and there's my tape. Still no explosion today. Nope. <laughs> Not yet. Hang around for about 20 more minutes. There might be. <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> okay, so real question, can you do a color change with the MMU like you can with a regular MK3, not need to have to per the purge block or take out the filament?
That is a good question. I've I've always wondered that because if if you can actually, I kind of I'm a fan of the multicolor prints. You know, I don't mean detailed that way. I mean where it has like a transition effect. And that'd be really cool if you could take several different colors and just have it kind of transfer transform from the let's say you do a vase and just have it where it's like a rainbow color all the way up it. That'd be really cool. I'll bet you they have that setting on them. Well, I understand the need for a purge block um, because if you're going to have like a crisp color change, let's here's a better example. Let's say you're printing something like that. Let's say you're taking this handle and you're printing it like that on your build plate. Okay. So to transfer from the yellow to the black, if you just had it do the transfer, you, you would have a certain amount of yellow mixed in with it and then it would slowly transfer into the black. Unless the person was able to somehow in the infill portion of it, take and have it do its purge in the infill. Now that might be a, a possibility too in the future, depending on the size of the item. But yeah, I, I understand why they have a purge block. It's just the amount of, of material that's wasted with it. That's the, the only questionable part that I have about it. There we go. Should use duct tape for this part. It'd probably been easier. <laughs> I could rip duct tape pretty easy. This electrical tape, man. Oh, man. That's the reason why I like using it for different projects is because of the electrical tape. It does not tear as easily as duct tape does. There we go. But it makes it a whole lot easier feeding it through that loom. <laughs> Really jacked up that part of the loom. Oh well. I can probably hide that somewhere. Electrical tape will hide it to an extent. <laughs> go okay so e0 i'm guessing is going to be the extruder that this is going to be so this board's actually set up for doing dual dual extruders that's cool okay I think we are set. So now, pretty much got to hook in these. So we have EXP2, which is going to go there. 
we have exp1 i'll probably end up putting looms over this too but i think i'll have to get a larger loom for it there we go so that's the lcd screen get all the loom stuff off of here I got a screw, screw right there. I need to get out of that track. There we go. Okay, so now we are to the two end stops here. For now, for time's sake, I can worry about putting loom on this later on. So I will just put that... See, this one's going to be for the Z end stop. Z end stop goes there. And then Y end stop goes second in. Okay. Don't worry. I will... Go back through and tidy everything up a little bit nicer before I put the everything back together on it. But let's, for giggles, let's see what we got. Uh, there we go. Actually, let's go ahead. I uh, still got to take and do the power supply. That would ex that would take care of a lot of things, wouldn't it? <laughs> Okay, on the power supply, first things first, on the side here, we are in America, so we're going to go 110. Okay, so that takes care of that portion. Let's see. Now, the power cord, this must be a fairly new kit. Because I went over next door to my neighbor yesterday and I picked up some of these to crimp onto the wire. Well, it turns out they're pre crimped, so I didn't have to worry about that part. So apparently they uh, heard some concerns. Another thing, too, is this is a three pin plug, so it's got the ground on it. So that's a huge improvement from what I'm from what I read in the past. Let's see. So we have line. I'm going to need a bigger screwdriver. We have line. We have neutral. And we have ground. And of course they don't tell you anything on there because I know that Chinese uh, color code is different from American color code. We go by black, yellow, and gray or green. And then Chinese, they go with blue. I think that's yellow. This is the part where being colorblind sucks. <laughs> this over to the camera there are the three different wires holding it just like that please let me know what the one in the right and the one in the center is <laughs> oh man <laughs> i'm gonna look it up and see if i can find a a uh, wire diagram for the for the power plug Actually, if and I don't have a uh, multimeter out here with me, rats. Hmm. I got another way I can do it, but I'm not going to do that non camera. <laughs> Let's see.
Okay, so blue is neutral, green, yellow stripe is ground. Okay, so if the blue is the neutral, that's going to go right in the center. Green, yellow stripe. You don't see a green with yellow stripe. I do see one with a stripe, but it's it's not green with a yellow stripe. <laughs> I think I might better go grab a ohm meter real quick and just check it out that way and make absolutely sure I got the right way. Yeah. Okay, guys, give me about two minutes. I'll be right back.
Well, that was a complete waste. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Thank you guys for not leaving me yet. <laughs> so I went to my mom's house. I usually keep a bar. I had a, like three different ohm meters up there. I can't find any of them. Um, since she passed away, we've been remodeling, moving things around. So things kind of, kind of got lost. So forgive me for what I'm about to do, but I'm getting ready to ch check something. So uh, don't do this at home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pull out the uh, Calvin's favorite uh, little toy here and turn it on. There we go. Now, whole key to this is to make sure you don't touch any wires together. Let's see. Okay, so if we know the blue one is a neutral, let's go ahead and try those two together. Yep, because if I go with these two together, it shouldn't work. Right, so we know now that the blue, or do we? Make sure I got the right color combination here. There we go be blue yeah so that's going to be the ground cool by the way he did not see me do that <laughs> oh man so the one where the stripe is going to be the ground. Cool. Okay. So that's the power going into it. Next thing I do is we got to get the power to the circuit board. I don't see anybody blowing me up in chat, so I'm wondering if chat froze. <laughs> Last thing I'm seeing on here is from Randall. About not the current software. Let me go ahead and just refresh the, sh the chat here. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> uh, chat froze up. <laughs> okay. So next thing you got to do, strip these. <laughs> Okay, I gotta go through and read the chat here. Don't do this, at home, kids. That's right. I gotta go up here now and see this. Pop yeah, see, somebody actually came on there and told me. Okay, blue is neutral, yellow, green, stripe, brown, brown line. Okay, that would have saved me a lot of time, wouldn't it? I apologize. I uh, <laughs> plug it in, try with your finger. I did that once. <laughs> Oh, man. That's bad. Bad, bad. <laughs> okay. Now that that fiasco is done, let's go ahead and get these crimped on here. Okay. So we're going to go red to a V positive. And we're going to go to black to the V negative. There we go. And when it comes to the other two fans, I think for now, I'm just going to run them directly to the power box until I uh, get a chance to run a different setup over here to the main body of the printer. Let's see, those two I don't have to worry about. Uh, 
Let's see. It looks like the chat moved and the rest of it didn't. Let's see. <laughs> I get kick out of Think Your Corner. We're going to have a fire today. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. So the positive goes that side. Negative goes on that side. Hey, 3D Print Creator, thank you for joining. I Today I started on this at just after 8.30 in the morning. And it's now 10.46. So I've been at it today for, what, two, just over two hours. Yesterday I worked on it for four hours. Okay, there we go. Okay. I'm going to take and set some stuff, move some stuff around here real quick. I'm going to get things ready here. I want to take this power supply and move it over here. Move Calvin's favorite friend under here. I was going to bug him with it tonight, but he's uh, feeling under the weather, so I don't think we're going to be doing a live stream tonight. <laughs> Actually, we got to get these fans going anyway, so put that there. Where's the other fan wires? There we go. Come on. Okay, dropped my screwdriver, didn't I? Seem to remember it falling. There it is. Just sticking the fans into the power supply here. I just don't like the idea of trying to fish the wires for the fans underneath the wires on the circuit board. Yeah, that's not gonna hold right. Where will the smoke come out today, Jimmy or the printer? <laughs> oh, man. 
Hopefully me. I'm replaceable. <laughs> oh, man. Come on. Get under that blade, you idiot. There we go. So now, just for giggles and keep things cool, which I don't see how that's going to be with these wires the way they are, I've got to come up with a better way of routing these wires. Let's see, these belong up here. I'll write them better later. But I just need to get this plate on here so I can have some air circulation over the over the circuit board. Okay. There we go. I'm just going to put two screws in for now, just to, so I can see if this works. Make sure everything's all cleaned off here as far as the little hairs. So we're ready for me to hit the power today and see if it uh, lives or... If it smokes, got all the wiring done the right way. Everything's in the way they say to do it. I think we're good. So let's go ahead and try it. Uh, actually, wait a minute. There we go. <laughs> we kept plugging it in. Just as I figured, nothing uh, amazing. <laughs> it says Midgebot 3D printer shows a 16 Celsius on the heat bed, a 16 Celsius on the extruder. <clears throat> Excuse me, on the extruder. So that is good. Let's see what happens when we hit home. Go prepare. Home all axis. Home that direction. It's homing this way. So far, nothing has happened with this. Yeah, it actually is going the wrong direction. Let's try that one more time. I wonder what that noise was. Repair. I didn't like that. Repair. Home all axis. Yep, it's going the wrong direction. Okay. So, I think that has to be reversed in the software, doesn't it? Let's see if the chat's, if I'm messing up on the chat again here or not. Oh, there it moved. <laughs> the squeak, I think, was from... Something to do with that. You know what that is? The end stop, though. Now, you know what? I think I'm, I'm wrong about it. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it might have been the, the Z-Rod. Let me see if I got a little bit of uh, something to leave it with.
I don't know why I kept thinking that the end stop was over here. I didn't. Re I forgot about being over there. So it's it wasn't that. So let me get a little bit of this. Go. This is a super white lithium grease. It's worked on my i3 for a long time. I like this stuff, so give that a shot on there and just see if that takes care of that squeaking noise. Okay, find me a napkin here. I keep dollar store napkins underneath my desk. <laughs> okay, let's give it a shot. All axis. Yeah, it was the Z rod. Just give it a moment, and once it hits that grease, it should take care of it. Let's see. YouTube getting way bad. Oh, though they didn't you didn't get a notification? Oh, you just got the notification. That is bad. <laughs> I don't think YouTube likes me. <laughs> yeah, that grease seems to have quieted, quieted the rod. I went back through yesterday and I kind of readjusted this rod because it was a little bit out of it was wanting to wobble. So I took my time and got everything readjusted. Okay. So that's homed. So now I can actually take and check to see whether I kind of calibrated it correctly. I grab a piece of paper. I'm just going to use this card right here. Okay, so that's pretty loose. There we go. It's got a little bit of play to it. I'm going to go ahead and Go to prepare, disable all steppers, slide this bed across. That feels good. That feels tight. There we go. That feels loose. There we go. Let's go ahead and rehome. Hey, that works. For now, I'm just going to take this wire and just zip tie it here. I want to do some testing and stuff with it before I put a cooling fan on it. We all know that it needs a cooling fan, but... So how are you feeling, Kelvin? You feeling any better today? There we go. And then this gives me a chance to, now that it's at the furthest point, I can take a zip tie. Bring that up here. Just kind of leave it a little bit loose like that. That's the furthest point away. That should work. Now I just need to put the Bowden tube on. There we go. Squeeze in the Bowden tube. Put in the Bowden tube. Want to print something? <laughs> I'm not clutching the toilet. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad your feelings a little bit better. Man. <laughs> okay so it looks like we've got firmware on here so that's a huge relief so the next thing we need to do is we need to do a print this is the sd card that came with it's a one gigabyte sd card 
So let's see if there's anything on it. Nope, nothing on it. So, uh, I hate to do that on this computer. It might make, make it jittery. I'm not sure. Let's just go ahead and give it a shot. Give me just a second here while I open Cura. Let that take its time to load up. Yeah, that's a relief that that part is done. While we're waiting for that, might as well just go ahead and preheat everything. Repair. Preheat PLA. PLA1. Everything's heating up. So far, no fires, so that's that's a huge plus. <laughs> One gigabyte SD card, definitely old stock. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm glad that is working. Check and make sure my wires are not going to be in a in a problems there. Well, the next thing I've got to figure out is how. Well, I'm sure this is probably something we're on on uh, Thingiverse for the extruder for a cooling fan. But I'll have to look into that and get that set up next. I'm glad to see that the power supply has a fan built onto it. That's cool. Plus SD card, it most likely won't work. That's probably true. There's a fang fan. What the? What was that? Is that the heat bed making a noise? <laughs> All I know is something's not warming up correctly. The heat bed is warm to the touch. I wonder what that noise was. What was funny is it was supposed to be warming up, but it... I looked over here and all the numbers were back to like it wasn't warming up. So now I've went ahead and I've got it heating back up now. Yeah, it looks like everything's heating up. Just did it again. I don't smell any magic smoke yet. I wonder what that uh, noise is. Is it the springs? Can't tell. It's up to temperature. It's uh, the bed's at 60. That's not shocking me, so that's good. Bed's at 60, which it's it's warm to the touch. The, the uh, 
Other parts up to 82 right now. It's supposed to be at 80, so it's kind of centering itself right now. Huh. Let's check the bed level again. Maybe something moved with the springs. Yep, that's what it feels like. I think the springs might have let go is the reason why it made that noise. There we go. Feels good. Yeah, that definitely let go. Let's see. Yeah, that's the right direction. That feels good. Yeah, I think the springs might have been just uh, making that noise. Definitely was a definite pop noise. Yeah, because I had the bed a lot looser. Yeah, Randall's saying spring pop. That's that's kind of what I'm guessing too. Just wasn't expecting it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start back over here at the beginning. There we go. Am I tightening or loosening? I think I was tightening. <laughs> there we go. Feels good. Back over here. Yep, we're back to normal. Okay. Prepare. No access. Hey, so we're just going to say that was from springs popping. <laughs> Calvin's wanting to take and make this into a laser engraver. I, I want to see how it prints. That's going to be interesting to see. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new profile in Cura. Let's see. Add printer. Let's see if this one's on here. Ah, uh, Tivo Tarantula. That's the first time I've ever had a printer that actually has a Cura set up already on it. It's calling for a 0.1 layer height. We're going to make that 0.2 for this first print. Uh, initial layer line width. We're going to go with 115. Wall thickness, I like 1.2 myself. Times 20% density. Let's make that 10. Make it faster. Good pattern. Let's go with zigzag. Make it faster. Print temperature. That's what I need to find out right now. Let's see. I need one of these. And... What filament should I use? First print. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Need something that looks good on camera. Let's go with this one. This is the AMZ 3D Transparent Blue.
And I apologize. I don't have my screen up where I can see the chat or anything at the moment. I'll change it here shortly. Just want to get a temperature, an idea for a temperature on this. Let's see. Let's get a better cut on that. Filament. Oh, I see. Had the Teflon tube been too deep. There we go. Let's raise the Z height. Twenty-five millimeters should be enough. We're getting some extrusion there. I want to go ahead and raise the temperature though, because that feels like I'm gonna have to push off a hard. Temperature, let's take it to 200. That's usually where I print with this, it's usually at 200 degrees. Let that warm up. Let me bring the chat up a little bit here so you can see what's going on. Hey, Greg, nice to see you're in there. <laughs> Put in the hole, push real hard. <laughs> 200 feels good. And you know, I'm not getting a whole lot of sag from it either. See, it doesn't have a part cooling fan. This is going to be fun. <laughs> okay, I'm dropping the chat for just a moment here. Get back over here to my settings. So I got set for 200, build plate for 60. It's set for the correct diameter. Uh, looks like everything's good. We're going to do away with brim and go with skirt. Three lines. What's our retraction on this? Let's see. Infill. Retraction distance is 6.5 millimeters. This is factory set too. I did not set that. I'll go ahead and give it a shot. Let's open the model up. Let's go with a 3D Benchy, shall we not? No, better not go with a Benchy. That's going to just be a complete nightmare. Dragon. No, that's too much. Do we need cooling? Uh, where is. How come I don't have a. Uh, Huh. I gotta pull something off the internet here really quick. Oh, come on. New window. There we go. And my favorite place in the whole wide world, Thingiverse. <laughs> Marvin. Put some Marvin and pop on here. Okay. Got the Marvin. Go back into Kira. Where you at, Marvin?
There it is. It says it'll take 22 minutes. Why not? Saved a removable drive. It says it's saved. I'm going to go ahead and bring everything back up here. There you guys are. SD cards inserted. From SD. Marvin. Hey, here we go. First print. transparent so the first layer you can barely tell whether it's printing or not we'll know by the second one i'm here popping so we're turning the temperature we we'll go up to 210 I help it along a little bit. Just increase it to 215, see if that takes care of the pop. It's still popping, not as much. We get to 220. Definitely having some issues with it. Still getting a lot of popping from the extruder. That's pretty much clogged up. I think that maybe the uh, retraction's too much. And it probably caused a clog. So let's find out. Stop print. And just disable the. Screen. Disable the steppers. Go ahead and get those off of there. What did I do? There it is. <laughs> this one bed's awful springy. <laughs> yeah, it's not coming off this so easy. It's all right. Let me go ahead and change the retraction settings on it. See if that's possibly what's caused that.
6.5 seems like a lot of retraction. Let's take that down to three. Retraction speed, we're going to make that 40. Retraction distance, we're going to make that four millimeters. And four millimeters on that part. Let's try that. Let's move it since I didn't get the little guy didn't get his feet off there. I'm just going to move him to a different spot of the print bed. Let's try that. Okay. There we go. Hey, 3D Maker Noob, how you doing? Thank you for joining. The PTF tube seems like it's in all the way. Oh, maybe not. Let's try that. Let me stop this there right now. Okay. Yeah, it's got a clog in it or something here it feels like nice there we go yeah i think you're right i don't think the ptf tubing was in all the way so let's go ahead and try it now There we go. May still have the bed too close to. past this first layer then it's going to be 2.2 2 layer height so hopefully it jumps up enough to where if that's what's causing the clicking otherwise i'll turn the temperature back up It's already starting to click again. Yeah, I was thinking it was too close, but the thing is, now that it's up a few layers, it shouldn't be clicking anymore. Okay. 
I did turn the temperature up too. And now it's not clicking. Okay, we're printing now. <laughs> so I apparently just need to turn the temperature up, probably about 215. I turned it to 210, and now it's quick clicking. So hopefully that fixed it. Let's see. Ooh, any cubic photons. Nice. Oh, you're going to win. That's no, no question about that. <laughs> when the trash like looks is about to bite. You should have been here a little bit ago whenever these springs started. Uh, we, it was the first time heating it up, and the springs were popping. <laughs> I was expecting the flames to pop out at any moment. <laughs> You guys can't see much from over there. Uh, let me. If I pick this printer up, that's probably going to mess the print up. Plus, I got to move the power supply with it. Ah. Right now, it's just on the feet of the of it. Let me see if I can move this around a little bit somehow to get it where you guys can see what it's doing. Seems like I've got a lot of parts left over. <laughs> it just does the fire extinguisher. Yeah, yesterday I had one of these sitting over there too. Oh <laughs> uh, no, quite honestly, it's it seems like a very solid machine. Electronics wise, no problems right out of the gate. Uh only problem I had so far is the, getting the the thing to quit popping. <laughs> you print good pieces to fix it to a piece of plywood. It's easy to move. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, do you think the printer is going to take uh, take on fire? I do not, honestly. I so far I don't see a problem here. Maybe in the earlier versions, but with this one here, I don't see a I don't see a problem with it yet at all. I mean, the wires are all cool. I'm reaching in and touching the blocks where the like where the heated bed plugs into it. They're cool. So I don't feel the, the any heat building up that way. I must say though, it's, it is a very quiet machine because of the, I guess because of all the way the belts are and everything. Because I don't remember my i3 having as many of the the pulleys on it. Definitely smooths down the action. How long did the printer take to build it? This one took uh, four hours yesterday, and then I've been on this now for. Let's see, I started at 8 30, 9 30, 10 30, 11 30, three hours today. So my, my brain shot. Seven hours. That's not too bad. Have I had a printer catch on fire? No, I have not, thankfully. I always. Kind of stay prepared, especially since Calvin and I were talking about doing the the fire safety one later on. And I picked up a couple of these AFO. Uh, it's a the automatic fire off. And what it is, it's got like a small explosive in it, and it's got a fuse around it. So if it catches on fire, if it reaches a certain temperature and that fuse sets off, it blows fire retardant everywhere. So anytime I have a newer printer and I'm going to leave and leave it unintended i just take the stand like if i was going to take and leave this one unintended i'd set it right there and if anything starts to catch on fire it would hit that and blow fire retardant all over it
think it's quite because of the rubber wheel on the extruder. That's possible. I do like these rubber wheels on this. I've never seen one like that. That's a pretty cool idea. It's a lot less time than it took to build mine, but did you have to disassemble as much? I actually did. First, I put this sideways, so I, d I didn't realize it went endwise, so I had to redo that. Then it turned out I put this piece on this side, so I had to swap those out. Uh, other than that, that was mainly about it. <laughs> Calvin's better safe than sorry, albeit messy as heck. Yes, that would be really messy. But at the same time, if it's a, a deal of destroying a computer or whatever is in the room compared to losing the entire building, I would much rather lose whatever's right here in the room. <laughs> I'm building one as well, the one with the bigger bed but I can't get the nozzle to reach all the corners. Did you have the same problem? This one seems like it reaches all the corners. Um, I'm not sure how much the bigger bed is supposed to be as far as, as measurements. This one is uh, 22 centimeters. So that's what, 220 millimeters by the same. So it's, uh, it's 220 uh, millimeters in both directions. I'm actually shocked at this Marvin. <laughs> I figured there'd be more drooping without the cooling fan on it. Is it where you guys can see it yet? Let me see if I can get the camera closer. There we go. I got the camera setting on the the Y axis motor. <laughs> Yeah, that is a pretty tall nozzle, isn't it? I didn't notice it until just now I was looking in the camera. I didn't really pay attention to it whenever I started this print. I figured you like that, Calvin. He's he's in all into Marvin's. <laughs> I should have printed it with a different filament, though, because the transparent's kind of hard to make out the lines and stuff on it. Yeah, I really wish I had thought before I started this print and went ahead and had the printer turned around toward the camera so you guys could have seen it the whole time. I apologize for that. Kind of new to these live uh, builds. <laughs> Got a giant half Marvin that almost came to Vegas. That would have been cool. Let's see if I can get this camera to focus better on the Marvin. Let's see here.
Yeah, trying to get something going here. Let's see. Oh, there's the focus. Never tried messing with the camera when it comes to the focus and all that. Eh, a little bit better. Maker Fun 3D. I run three cameras the, uh, through uh, OBS when I'm live. My Canon DSLR is my main camera. I have a small one on my laptop for me. And when I picked up a Logitech 920 when they had the Black Friday sale. But when I use the, the Logitech 920, um, I, need a, I need a setup for more cameras if I'm going to keep doing this kind of stuff, to be honest with you. So that's my, my first real... I mean, other than the the uh, printer bot smalls, this is my first real dive into a full fledged build on on camera. Start to slow down. Once again, I'm reaching into the circuit board, touching the block for where the heated bed wires plug in. It's still cool to the touch. Air coming out of the, from around the circuit board where the fan's blowing in is all nice and it's just, Lukewarm. It's not anything hot. Well, thank you, Maker Fun. I appreciate it. Thank you. So, okay, where are you going now? <laughs> okay, I guess it wants to present it. <laughs> okay, I'm probably going to let everything cool down first, but let's... Yeah, I like cool down first. Uh, you can probably see up here. That's where the cooling fan would have really come in handy for that. But see everything cooling down? Yes, it is. Okay, let me go ahead and put the camera back up. There we go. Go ahead and see, you got to reset some stuff here. There we go. <laughs> I to reset my camera setup. <clears throat> Yeah, no fire. It seems like everything stayed fairly cool. Power supplies stay cool. Of course, it's got a nice fan on it. One of the next things I want to do is I want to figure out where in the world to mount this thing. I don't want it just laying on the desk. I want to put it up here. I'm sure there's probably something on Thingiverse already for printing a bracket for the top. If not, I'll make one for it because that's that would be cool to have it just sitting on top and be done with it. Yeah, this is a very springy bed. I'm, of course, I'm used to having like the the very first printer I had it had an aluminum undercarriage to it. This one's got the the I call it plexiglass, but it's it's the acrylic. So that in itself makes it more springy. But yeah. <laughs> Let's see. What's my favorite show on YouTube or on TV? If you're talking TV, then it's always going to be Mythbusters and those. If uh, you're talking about on on YouTube, it's it's uh, 
the tech talk on Tuesday nights or on the Thursday nights with uh, uh, Barnacles and Jay's Two Cents. Let's see, I think we're to the point. Maybe nope. So forty-six degrees. Yeah, it's coming off. There we go. Bring it over there to you so you can see how it looks. And swing the monitor over so I can see. There we go. Come on. Focus. <laughs> there we go. There. See the loop? A little bit messy looking. But as far as layer lines go, layer lines look really nice on that. I wish that thing would focus better. That actually turned out very smooth for a point for a uh, point two layer height. That turned out very smooth. I was surprised. I think the biggest thing it's going to need is a parts cooling fan. Once I get that set up on it, I think this printer is going to going to work nice. <laughs> Which after all the stuff I have read on on uh, Twitter and all that, I'm really shocked at the detail and and the fact that it went together still have a full fire extinguisher <laughs> what speed was it printed at that's a good question because i went with whatever the defaults were in cura so print speed 60 millimeters per second outer wall speed is 30 millimeters per second travel speed was 120 millimeters per second and initial layer, layer speed was 30 millimeters per second. Yep. Big part cooling fan. I actually, what I like the best is actually the blowers. Uh, the Meat Creator 2 has a blower on the side of it, and that thing, I like the cooling on it better. So I think if I can figure out how to do it, I think if I can find something with a blower-type setup on it, I think that's going to be cool. Is the fire thing that I can't spill full? Yes, Joe's always really cool about joining live streams. He's <laughs> he's a really cool guy. If you ever get a chance to meet him, you need to. He's a really, really cool guy to hang out with. I had the pleasure of meeting him last year at uh, Bay Area Maker Fair, him and his wife, and they're just really, really nice people. Yes, plexiglass acrylic is called Perspex. Oh, really? I haven't heard that one. <laughs> really, really bald, too. <laughs> yes, what Calvin needs to be. <laughs> oh. You got some network server fans? That might do the trick. The next 3D printing festival. I honestly do not know. I need to start looking that up and start getting things kind of planned. First specs is a UK thing. That's cool. It's called uh, Maker Fair. That's what they, they call them. And uh, they have the one here in Bay Area. I'm trying to remember what month it was. I want to say February, March, somewhere in there was when they had it. And uh, but they're they're really cool. And then I know they have the Mid Midwest Rip Rap Festival, and they got different ones like that. And I would have really liked to have went to CES. <laughs> we were there. Uh, Calvin and I took off to go see Jeff, uh, the uh, Print3D channel, for the last day of his 365-day project that he was doing. And the, on that Sunday when, before we left, we actually took the monorail and we went right, right past where they're going to have CES. And he's like, that's where the 3D printers are going to be. I'm like, oh, I did not know. <laughs> Hey, Nancy, thank you for joining.
Oh, I'd love to see you. I hope you can make it to one of them. I, I'm going to definitely, I'm planning on being at the one up here in uh, San Mateo. That's one I'm planning on being at. I would have really liked to have went to the other ones, but as far as finances and, and other things going on, I'm not going to be able to make it to the other ones. Well, guys, that's another thing that's got to get fixed. I'm going to put a power switch on this thing. <laughs> that's the thing about this printer, though. It's a nice entry printer. Uh, there's a lot of upgrades that can be done to it. And for the price point, you can afford to do it. That's the, the cool thing about it. But thankfully, it went together. Thankfully, it didn't catch on fire. <laughs> Honestly, it's a nice printer for, for the for the money. I believe I looked it up last night. I think I saw one place to sell them for $249.99. I think they have specials on uh, GearBest and different websites for where they actually are, are sometimes at $200 or less. So definitely don't be afraid of getting one of these. I don't see a problem with it. <laughs> All the kidding that, that Calvin and I have done, honestly, it's... For the money, it's not a bad printer at all. Um, I really wish, with, especially with the aluminum extrusions, that they had went with either aluminum or stamped steel for the for the other parts that are made out of, of uh, acrylic. But other than that, it went together and no issues at all with it. Other than my mistakes, and that's partially because of the instruction manual, how it is, but it's one of those things where you just live and learn with it. <laughs> Does the Maker Fairy have a website? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you make, oh, I mean Maker Fair. Uh, it's uh, Make Magazine. So if you go to, I believe it's make.com, I think that you can get, get to it from there. Let's see, two upgrades for safety. MOSFET. You need it. You need one. Yes, I would definitely recommend a MOSFET. Get a few switch with a and a print printed cover for the live wires on the power supply. There are several on Thingiverse. I was surprised to see on this power supply it actually has a cover that comes over the top. It doesn't cover over the all the way over it, but it actually covers the top where the you stand the biggest chance of actually poking your finger into it. But yeah, that's definitely one thing I would have really liked to see them do is like what GTEC does on theirs where they have a the four pin ATX connector on the power board. That way you just take your your power wires from the your power supply and you just plug it right into the, the circuit board. Instead of having it where you have to do the set screws and all that. That's that's the weak link, I feel, in in this whole setup. But uh that would be nice if they would would change that a little bit and go with just an ATX connector and be done with it. Even if they took and brought it out the bottom of the circuit board and it plugged in so that they could still put the acrylic piece on the front of it. In fact, now that it's quit printing, I might as well just go ahead and kind of turn things around here so that you can see what I've been seeing. There we go. I really wish I could have cleaned this up a little bit better to present to you guys a little bit nicer, but like I said, I got to do some more work on the wiring. I definitely want to take a mount this where it's up here. I'm just going to set that back here for now, <laughs> but there it is. It's done. Yeah, I'm so glad to get that done. I felt really bad after Joe gave it to me that, that it took me this long to, to get around to it. But uh, I'm just really glad to see that it's done and it works. And I think he'll be relieved too to see that it works. <laughs> Let's see. I really do like the way they have this cover over the the circuit board. That really is nice. But I want to take and rearrange the wiring so that there's not so much covering over where the fan would be hitting it. 
I think that'll be a really cool deal. Anyway, hey, big guy, any, uh, any other questions, comments, concerns, other than the MOSFET, and which I do completely agree with, and doing some upgrades as far as like a power switch. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I do enjoy doing the live streams. That when it comes to building something like this, it makes it a lot more fun to have somebody else to talk to. That way, you're not just in here cussing and <laughs> just saying, "Why am I doing this to myself?" <laughs> once, once in a while, somebody yells out and says, "Don't do that!" Like when I, one time, I was trying to take a stepper motor apart. I think it was supposed to disrupt the space-time continuum or or whatever it was. <laughs> well, guys, I think that's going to do it. We're nearing 12 o'clock. It's time for lunch. Yes, I'm glad it works too. And actually, you were talking about uh, doing a laser setup on here. I can't see why a person couldn't, quite honestly. Uh, there's four bolts right there that hold the hot end. I can't see why a person couldn't just pull that off and then put... A laser a setup right there. Ferrules, yes. That was another good point. Uh, whenever I put the the wires in for, what was it? Well, the, the heated bed had them already attached onto it. It was for the hot end. That one doesn't have them, but they're also very small wires. And then uh, when it comes to the wiring coming from the power supply going into it, uh, those didn't have it as well. So Maker Fun has seen links where people have been adding lasers to them. So you're not you're not the first one, Calvin. <laughs> okay, guys. Lasers are for sharks. Pew pew. <laughs> Thank you very much for sticking with me for the last two days. Thank you very much for for being with me and keeping me company on this. Um, I wanted to say a special thank you to Joe Larson from uh, 3D Printing Professor. This was his printer. This is what he gave me. And I want to thank him so much for, for it. I'm going to talk to him, too, and see if he uh, has a, uh, wherever he got the printer from, if he has a link to it. I'll add his link into my video description because, once again, this was his printer. And I want to thank him so much for for giving me the opportunity to, to do a live build like this. And this is all because of him. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Take care. I probably not going to have any normal videos this week because of the, the two live streams I've done, but uh, next week I'll be get, getting back to normal. And as far as Calvin, if you're still in here, are we on for tonight or are we off for tonight when it comes to the live stream? It's going to take about 30 seconds for him to answer me. <laughs> Turkins is saying, check out Twitter for dragons. I will do. He knows I love I love his dragon. I mean, the dragon he designed is awesome. Let's see. Come on, Calvin. Answer me. <laughs> Funny part is he probably already did by now. I'm just waiting for it to come through. <laughs> He's off. Okay, so there's not going to be a live stream tonight uh, for, the, for the Calvin and Jimmy show. So that'll be next week on Tuesday night. We'll be doing that again. And uh, we'll do go ahead and do that over on his channel as well. But uh, thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Take care. And I will catch you in the next one.